I took a tractor driving class in uh, college. Oh my God, I dropped out. <laughs> when you think of sustainability, motorsports is about the last thing that comes to mind. But IndyCar and Bridgestone are trying to change that. Last year, IndyCar introduced a new tire, the Firestone Firehawk. But what makes this tire unique is that it's made from Waiuli. And what the heck is Waiuli? We're about to find out. I'm heading to Eloy, Arizona to check out Bridgestone's Waiuli farm to see firsthand how this shrub turns into this tire. This is crazy because it, it doesn't look like something you'd farm. It looks like a weed that you would see True. out in the desert. True, being a natural shrub, uh, it, it does. It looks just like something that you would see alongside the road or, or out in a, in a barren desert. Very few weeds will come through because it won't get any sunshine on the ground. And so it takes real, very little maintenance. Yeah. Once, it, once the canopy closes up, uh, it just, you just start feeding it some water, which is very minimal, and watch it grow. So is that, is that one of the issues you've been running into is that like, it seems very easy to grow, but you guys don't have the infrastructure for it. Like there aren't really any other plants that are harvested this way. So you have to Correct. build your own machinery. Correct. Anything yeah. that we've needed out here, I've basically had to design and build. Okay, so how would you harvest something like this? So this is the shrub harvester. When you cut the Waiuli off, what this does is it's gonna cut its way into that canopy. As we first started with just the saw oh, blades. Oh, geez, I didn't even see these. Yeah. There's... Holy crap, so that's just taken off right above the root. That's like that show BattleBots or whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you would destroy right. a BattleBot. Right. <laughs> but these vertical cutters had to come into play because you had to get in the field. The canopy is so tight, it actually had to cut its way into the field before it could get to the stem to cut it. No way. Yeah. Okay, so this is just cutting right through. Right. And then the, the whole plant will just fall so over. So the very forward. simple reel system will just take the plant and just lay it right back into wow. the field. I took a tractor driving class in uh, college and I dropped out. <laughs> oh, he's waving me over. Now you're going to pull that forward you and push it forward just a bit. Oh my god, it is so sensitive. Big. Whoa, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the wheel is too, it's, it's got too much moisture in it. In the very beginning, I'm just hitting stuff and it's going <laughs> And then once it started running smooth, I'm like, oh, all right. I'm like, like this, I understand. You have to cut through the thick root. And, and, but I was like, this doesn't seem that necessary. When I was up there, I was like, dude, I, you, this wouldn't be able to work without this because this is just clearing all the debris. It would just stack up and get stuck. So this is just helping it pass through all the, the gearbox and everything affiliated with these blades. I don't know why they trusted me to get in here. <laughs> My biggest takeaway, like the goal of this whole thing is it's mechanized. So the old system is to cut slashes and trees and it takes people a huge labor force to go and collect the sap and, and latex from these trees. If you can cut it with one person doing an entire field, more sustainable way of collecting rubber than the old system, so. We just finished cutting this. So all of these plants are cut and they've just been laid right back into a two row and two row segments. So the baler can come in and bale up two rows at a time, but all of these plants are, are cut off. So this somehow compacts this into like a, hay a hay bale? Correct, correct. It's, somehow... it's picking it up here, it's going up into a feed housing, and there's a big plunger in here that is plunging the material into the chamber. So is this technically the last machine this this bale here will be loaded on a trailer and taken to the processing plant for latex and rubber in the life of the plant this will be the first step okay because you want to pull the seed off as the plant is one year old got it so the, okay so the goal of this would be to collect the seeds without damaging the plants that's exactly right okay. well this is the coolest looking machine by far so i d developed and built the collector header here that the seed will, will be brushed and will fall into that trough. And some small air here will come and push the seed 
back to the elbow. Yep. It pushes to the elbow and that air takes that seed, picks it up and takes it right to the back. What's so cool about this is it's like, this is very complex. I would never be able to do this, but when you're explaining it, it's all so simple. Very, right. It's like, Correct. It, it, everything makes sense. You look at this from a far away, you're yeah. like, what the hell is this monster? Right. And you look at this and the way you're explaining it, it's like, you're going through, it's like a car wash. You're like right. <laughs> brushing okay. up the plants, collecting the seeds, vacuumed up. See, we're one of the, the only ones that I know of that actually process the seed to turn around and plant for new plants. Mm -hmm. So our tires, we can claim, are from the seed to the tread. So cool. I learned this from my dad. Whether he knows it or not, yeah. this was instilled in me as I was growing up. Do you watch IndyCar? And like, oh, you, you, yeah. <laughs> the race you're going to, yep. Mike and I were able to go last year. The first time we seen them in the pits, switching to the Waiuli tire, I had pictures of it because that was a proud moment. Oh, dude, you Seeing that tilts, tire go yeah. on oh. and that tra that car leaving the pits, that that's where it was at. Right that's, there. that's beautiful, man. Yep. All of this makes sense to me. Do you, does the science, <laughs> how, do you, how do you do with the science? Does that hold up? How this turns into rubber? Yeah, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll we'll, we'll let, find that out. <laughs> I, let, I let Mike take care of that problem. Somehow that turns to this. That turns to this. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's rubber and resin in here. Okay. You just can't see it. Yeah, no one would. <laughs> so we take this and run it through a solvent extraction process. So here is what the solvent looks like um, with dilute rubber and resin in it. We extract this to get this. I know you add solvent to this, mm -hmm. but for like the dumbed down Dylan version. Yeah. What are you essentially doing to this that like causes this reaction to turn into something else? Um, kind of think like sugar and water. So you put, uh, you take sugar, you know, solid, uh, you put it in a mixing bowl and you pour water into it. Okay. Do you see the sugar anymore after you stir it up? No. It, it dissolves it. We're doing the same thing with solvent here. God, that was such a good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I so, understand science now. Yeah, so the solvent goes in, dissolves the rubber and the resin, and just extracts it out. Easy, okay, mm -hmm. I'm following, even better now. So this is what we call cement. So this is a, a concentrated form of rubber. So this was in here, so this is just a concentrated form. If we take this and run it through a, another process and remove all the solvent and end up with a dry block of rubber. But besides the smell, it's this is 100% rubber. Yes, it's the same as rubber that you would get out of a Havea rubber tree. Test. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the future. I got it. Should have paid more attention in chemistry class, <laughs> but I think I'm, I think I'm following. <laughs>from the farm to the track and we saw how these tires were made and now we can see how they're performed so we're gonna go talk to Kara the head engineer at Firestone but first we're gonna take a hot lap because we're in Nashville we're at IndyCar I'm excited to see you do this <laughs> let's go fast here we've got the primary tire and then the alternate tire and so how like is your goal right now these are the replacement tires so after they burn through the normal ones they'll go to the replacement okay so that's a great question we have primary and then alternate tires okay the alternate tires are faster so other than the sidewall being different the the tread is actually a little bit softer okay. they'll you they'll want to use these during qualifying so we're going to go out there in a bit see qualifying oh, cool. um, cars on track they're amazingly fast um, these will be faster, so they'll be faster, but the tire compound actually drops off. So it's really sticky, but it'll start to drop off where the primary tire is going to be nice and durable and consistent. So this through is like a, a soft tire. It's like a soft tire, Got exactly. It. The compound is a soft compound. So only have one change per race? So uh, they No, they actually can change uh, as many times as they need to. So why wouldn't they start with the soft? So they can start with a soft, but they have to balance how long they think they're going to run it. So it's going to be faster initially, oh, but then it's going to get slower. 
so you can have more pit stops. Um, so there's always okay. a challenge, and there's the really start ra smart race engineers that can figure all that out. I got it. We can walk in the shade a little bit and see what it's like to mount a tire. Okay. Kind of look at the tire. Uh, this is just the tire itself. So this is it's about maybe 17 pounds or so. Oh yeah, pretty not, light. Not that heavy. Yeah. So um, this is Wiley. <laughs> that's Wiley. <laughs> wow. It blows my mind. Yeah. So. The tire in itself doesn't have any strength. If you put a tire um, on the wheel and it has no air in it, yep. it's just going to go flat. Yep. So the air is actually what gives the tire strength. So I had you when I was riding bikes to follow my flat tires. Yeah, wait, so you don't, there's nothing in between. No, that's it. It's, how's it air tight? Well, it's going to air up in a second, so come around on this side. How do I know when it's full? You'll know. OK. Oh, <laughs> it's going to pop. Whoa! Okay. Yep. Okay, so how is it airtight? It's just All right, pushed so, up against the wheel. Yeah, line. so those, those beads that are in the tire, that was a really firm part of the tire, is now pushed up against the side of the wheel. So that beads are what are, is actually holding it. It's the air pressure that's pushing out on the beads that's holding it there. So now what was super soft Whoa. and super pliable. Yeah, I can't push it in at all. It's still so light though. Yes. Oh my God. So the titanium alloy wheels are super light. And, my, and then the wheels are also, the tires themselves are also like. It's uh, it's honestly really cool because this is so high level. Yeah. And then you guys are experimenting with something yes. that can change the, the world. And yes. it's like, if you guys are doing it, we can all embrace it. Absolutely. Uh, it is, that, it's really cool. That's uh, It takes some courage for you guys to do this. All right, well, thank you. I'm excited to see the race. Yes, you're welcome. IndyCar and Bridgestone have made huge strides with Waiuli. If this is successful, it can be a game changer. It would mean that the United States can finally produce its own rubber and would be a major step forward for sustainability. All spring I've come through Childlike wonder Without you I will never be the same You like the tires? Like my you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're fast? Oh yeah.